What's up guys, it's Eli with Night Jiu Jitsu here and um, I want to show a couple things from Butterfly Guard, some interesting uh, options of what to do whenever you start to elevate this person based on their reaction. Because what happens whenever you start to elevate somebody from Butterfly Guard, they typically have two common reactions. They're either going to like put their landing gear out or they're going to keep tucked because they know that there's trouble if they put their feet down, you know. If we're in Butterfly, then the big thing here is whenever I go to elevate, I don't necessarily have to have <laughs> double unders here. Uh, I can, but you don't have to have them. The main thing is that he's not able to post and frame with his hands. So something uh, that's really helpful is if I can get my shoulders, I know I have a clear path from my shoulder under his wrist. And once I make that happen, now I can get to his elbows here. Once I get to his tricep tendons or elbow area like this, now um, what can happen is whenever I go to elevate him, I know his hands are probably gonna start to reach toward the ground. So the first ones that we'll look at, I'm gonna show you two options of if he puts his feet out whenever I go to elevate him. So we go here and I post him up and he puts his feet down. Now, in this particular case, whenever he put his feet down, he's clearly below the line of my shoulders. So a good option for me from here this way is to take this leg. I'm gonna keep one hook inserted and I'm gonna take the other hook and use it to help rotate me until I can get this X frame. This is actually a reverse X guard here on his leg. I'm gonna post this hand on his ribs on this side and then start to elevate him. As I go to elevate, I'm gonna collect, I'm gonna reach across and collect his far leg here. But whenever we land in this position, now I've essentially established a saddle type position. From here now, so the, the saddle position of course is where my outside leg is weaving in here and then my other leg, the one that's farther from his body, is going here. I'm keeping crossed at the ankles and I've collected both of his legs because of the way that we fell. Now I've got a lot of good attacks. From here, I can start to straight, uh, attack the straight ankle lock. A little better way to do that is to get this reverse grip. That's gonna be a little stronger for the straight ankle lock on this side. We can also look if he's pulling his leg away and extending the space underneath his leg here. I can look to pummel my other leg inside to collect that space. And then we can go for this Aoki lock here. So where his heel is actually on my chest, his feet are still in my armpit. And at that point here now, when I start to lean and rotate my leg this way and lean the other way, it's a lot of pressure laterally on his knee. So that's a pretty nasty submission. If I lose this leg or I choose to pass this leg, either way, we still have the heel exposure on this side over here to where I can start attacking the heel hook. So the saddle position in and of itself is a very valuable position, like target rich environment to be able to attack the legs with heel hooks and foot locks and everything else, knee bars, all kinds of stuff in there. Again, I got my shoulders under his wrists. I get the back of his elbows. I go to elevate him. He puts his feet down, boom, this way. I scissor in this way, I post on his ribs, I lift, I collect that far leg, and then we're back in the saddle, I can start attacking the legs. Now, if it happens that his legs post higher, whenever I go to elevate him, we get here and I start to pick him up, and this time he's up a little higher. So now I'm gonna go for a standard X. So the difference is this one here, first time it, it weaved in underneath my first leg. This time here, I'm gonna turn myself sideways and I'm gonna weave on top. So if you look at the configuration of my legs here, my leg coming from the back is going on top, my leg that's in the front is going on bottom, and I'm X'd over here on this leg. The difference in the upper body, because he's so much higher up with his legs, is that now his leg is by my shoulder, and I'm gonna keep my head close, and I'm gonna grab to the inside of his leg here, so that he can't immediately start rotating that way and running away from me, right? Now, from this position, we have lots of different options as well. A lot of times he'll stand all the way up. And if he does, now, one thing that I have from here that I can look at, I've got different kind of simple sweeps, but there's a really good back take from here. If I go here this way, and I'm gonna reach through behind his knee, grab my own bicep, and then at that point, I'm gonna lift his leg and pass it over my head. As I go to do that here, I square myself up behind him. I'm gonna grab his two hips. I'm gonna extend my legs and pull his butt down into my lap so that now, I've essentially established this back control from that X guard kind of position like that. So one more time on this one, when we get to this position here, and it's happened from the same thing, except he just puts his feet a little farther up this time. We go here, boom. I go to this position, I get here. I'm gonna elevate, get myself behind him so my shins are back here like this crab ride position. I grab his two hips, pull his butt down, and then I'm able to get that back control. Now we're gonna look at what happens if he doesn't put the landing gear out, right? He keeps his feet tucked because, well, he's already seen what happens if he does put his feet down. So we're gonna do kind of a similar entry. This is all kind of operating off of here. It's not the only entry, but it's an entry. Where I go here, I lift up, but he keeps his feet tucked. 
oh, he sits back down. Now, when he does that, notice on this side, I let go of the, the wrist so that now this arm can curl up. I'm taking my forearm to the outside of his tricep. What that does is it rolls his hand over to where my, his wrist is over here by my uh, shoulder. I'm gonna pinch his wrist between my shoulder and my ear, and I'm gonna hug this way. I'm going way over the arm like this, and I'm going wrist to wrist, nice strong grip this way. If I can, from there, if I got a good bite on this, I'm gonna put my foot on his hip, I'm gonna fall toward that side over here, and I'm gonna bring my second knee up to where I get the knee on the back of his shoulder, rolling in and down. I wanna make a sandwich between my two knees and his shoulder like that. I wanna keep hugging the well of his elbow toward my chest and I keep my head up so his wrist stays pinched. That way I've taken the range of motion out of his shoulder and out of his wrist. So all the pressure is going into the hinge joint, which is the easiest one to break theoretically, right? And we get that straight arm, udigatami, arm crunch, or sorry, he's a gatami because the knee's involved. Uh, whatever you wanna call it, it's that arm crunch kind of technique. What will happen sometimes here is if I go do the same thing again, again, he keeps his feet tucked, here, boom, as we sit back down, I get this, but look at how deep his arm is now. So I still wanna make the same crunch, but now the secondary arm acts as a little bit more of a frame to keep him from smashing me forward. So now, wrist to wrist, I've still got the arm, but I don't have as good of a bite to be able to attack that. So the next thing I wanna to look to do now, I'm gonna take one of my legs, I'm gonna weave it across his body. So what's happening here, this leg's going in and across to his hip, my ankle's over here and the wedge of his hip, and then as I go this time now, because I can't fall this way too easily, I'm gonna go the other side and I'm gonna replace this forearm frame with my shin. Once I get that inside, now I press down and that's gonna allow me now to pummel this leg up and over, right? When I pummel that leg over and through, I've got a good bite high up on his arm. My second leg on this side is hugging into his armpit so that he doesn't press my foot down to the ground. If he can do this, he can relieve a lot of the pressure and maybe get his arm free. So I'm gonna hook nice and tight like this. At this point here, I may be able to slide up and finish with this like straight arm bar here, kind of like a choy bar or another straight arm bar kind of configuration where my knee goes down, I hug the wrist, and then I get the straight arm lock like that. Um, so that's possible. Now, <clears throat> if we're trying that though, and what happens, is that he starts to hug that arm up again. So we get here, on this way, I get in, I've got the good bite, I've got the frame, I weave through, my frame comes up here, he bites, he pulls the arm back now. Ah, so this is a new problem, right? So now, whenever we get in this position, I'm still gonna go here, I still wanna pummel my arm, or my leg rather, inside like this. And from here, sometimes I can use this to push off to be able to try to get that arm extended back out, right? If that's not happening for me, I can switch the grip, and then use this power Kimura to also try to get the arm out. Now I'm able to be able to get the Kimura. If he's just too damn strong and I cannot get that, I'm gonna pummel this leg again all the way through. I'm gonna grab my thigh on my backside. And from here now, I'm gonna go knees down, forehead down like this. Now at this point here, uh, sometimes if there's a lot of pressure, he may roll out and I may still get the straight arm bar. But if not, another option I can elect to do is from here, start pummeling this leg back across till I get my knee to the far side of his body. At that point, I can push myself up and then I'm looking to take his back just like this. So I've got a hook inside. This is gonna become a hook inside in just a moment, right? But from there, we've got a good seat belt. And I essentially used that whole sequence to take his back from Butterfly Guard. Off of these options, you can kind of see that if I can just get this guy elevated a, a, on top of me, and then he, depending on how he wants to redistribute his weight so he doesn't just get flipped completely over me, then that's gonna give me my options. So he chooses how he loses in that sense right there, as the saying goes. And this is just touching on a few options that we have. There's also triangles involved, there's sweeps, there's back takes, there's K-guard entries. The, the possibilities are virtually endless, but I, I like these to look at a good kind of introduction of how we can attack sweep versus submission, sweep and submission combos from Butterfly Guard. So I hope you guys like these. Uh, appreciate it, Mike. Thank you, brother. And uh, make sure you drop a comment, like, subscribe, share, do all that stuff. Keep watching that Jiu-Jitsu channel, guys.